What up, what up, what up? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and pets of all ages, to another Madden 25 Ultimate Team gameplay. We are here in week eight, and uh, this right here, since we are Madden first string or all pro first string, I don't know where we are, we're, we're at the top level. And um, this right here will get us a playoff berth, a guaranteed playoff berth. And uh, in order to get a first round bye, you have to win out completely, you know, 10 games in a row. To go on ahead and, um, you know, get that. So, hopefully we can achieve that. And I take a look at my opponent's team, and I'm like, this is not even fair. Uh, I don't even bother going through all the way. I just stop right here, and I'm like, wow. He's got a bunch of, you know, silvers and bronze and, you know, mid-80s. And um, it it's going to be, like, slim and none to be able to beat a team of the caliber that I have on the field just due to... Uh, the strength of the AI of the players that I have, you know what I mean? They pretty much handle a lot for me, and uh, I'm not saying it's impossible for a team, you know, to win, uh, like um, the team that he got against. Mine, but it's very, 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 very difficult, right? They throws a pick to Dion, and uh, he ends up just quitting after that. And uh, can't blame him. You know what I mean? I hate when people quit him up, but I can't blame him. That's an unfair matchup. We shouldn't have even seen the same field. You know what I mean? So now we go to next week, and this is a doozy. You're gonna want to sit down. You're gonna want to, you know, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you favorite this video because you're gonna want to see it again. Make sure you go on ahead, grab a snack, and relax. Calm down and watch a video. So right now we go into my opponent's, you know, team. And like, okay, this this is more of the caliber of the team that I should be facing. You know, uh, a whole bunch of studs up and down the lineup. You know, 99s and 98s and 96s. And, you know, very, very good team, as you can see. Uh, just some of the best players at each position. You know what I mean? So um, it's, it's you know, definitely tough to go up against a stack team like this. You know, uh, but I definitely feel that I have the upper hand when it comes to uh, team-wise. You know, my team, I would say, is better than his. So, um, it, it comes to performance. You know, I definitely, like I said, I have the edge. But his team is definitely way good enough for him to be able to beat me. You know, as long as I, uh, uh, as, as long as he can force me to play bad, you know, make some mistakes, and uh, he continues to do things like that, you know what, well, he should be all right. So, uh, we're down 7-0. And, uh, you know, we got to be able to hopefully, you know, run the ball effectively, you know, create a nice ground game. Even though I don't like running the ball out of Kansas City playbook, which is what I was using at the time because the running plays are very bad. But, you know, I, I still try to set a tempo running the ball. You know what I mean? It's very, very important. If you become too one-dimensional, no matter how good you are at that one dimension, you know what I mean? No matter how good you are at passing or, or at running, if you continue to do it and 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 not change up your style, it's going to be very tough to beat somebody who knows how to make adjustments. So uh, first and 10 right here, man. We back up with Drew Brees. We're looking in. I get sacked. Nobody was able to get open. Second and forever, we drop back. And just a really quick dump off there to Vernon Davis. Uh, make it a manageable third down situation. So uh, right there, we end up just going back to Vernon Davis, getting open, crossing over towards the left. So right now, you know, I'm getting heavy into passing as I always do. Bad, bad, bad play by me. Um, he's just sticking it to me and under. You know what I mean? And that's what a lot of Mutt players tend to do. A lot of Mutt players tend to uh, stick in two me and under. Uh, you guys may hear Sonic in the background as my baby playing on his Kindle. Um, you know, uh, he... Uh, he, uh, you know, a, a lot of people stick in two man under because they use the strength of their, you know, coverage and things like that. And uh, I, I, I threw the out route too early. You know what I mean? And uh, that that happens a lot more than I would like to. You know what I mean? Uh, if the timing is not right on them out routes, and you're going up against a good corner, they will snag it. Your timing has to be perfect. Because if not, you will throw an interception such as I shown last possession. So, you know, you got to be careful. If the corner is good enough, you know, they will, uh, you know, snag it from you if you uh, throw it a little too early or too late for that fact. So, right there, it's a fumble! But uh, the ground caused that fumble, so we do uh, retrieve ball back. And uh, hopefully we can just go on ahead and punch this in the end zone with uh, the big old stink dick man himself, Eric Dickerson. First and goes, uh, and uh, we end up just sneaking it in there with Drew Brees. So, you know, I feel like we're back in this game. You know, we do get ball at halftime, so uh, we could either hold them to a field goal or get a stop here. That right there would be huge. That would give us the opportunity to take the lead uh, when we get the ball back at halftime. So, but uh, right now, you know, he's, he's going to a lot of wheel routes. 
which I usually will give you. You know what I mean? Like another wheel route right there. I will give you the underneath routes, you know, until, you know, you continue to abuse it. Then I will make the, the proper adjustments to, uh, you know, take those wheel routes away from you. But, you know, so far, you know, he's, he's continuously going to the wheel routes right there. Beats me over the middle. Uh, you know, caught me slipping, not paying attention. Should have adjusted for that. So now I'm down 17-7. And I'm not feeling too good about it. You know what I mean? Play action, that's my fault. I definitely did not want to run a play action. I rarely ever run play action and actually keep the play action animation. Usually I'll, uh, you know, put the running back on a route, uh, which I forgot to do there. So right there, we got lucky. Again, another out route, which I just threw too early. My timing on these routes are just way off, and that can cause a lot of trouble. You know what I mean? Uh, if you happen to throw an out route too early uh, before they, they uh, make their break, they kind of just turn around, and it kind of turns into like a curl route. But the defender is underneath, and they just turn around and snag it. Uh, right there, we go over the middle, and we hit him with the skinny. No timeouts left right here. I want to try and go to the back of the end. So I try to, and I throw another interception. And that right there was big. Drew Brees got hit as he was uh, getting ready to throw the ball, which I know kind of uh, took a little bit of, you know, off of that throw, you know, just a little bit of a throw power on that as uh, he got hit just as I was throwing the ball. So worst case scenario, I was hoping for maybe an incompletion. Um, if I didn't catch the touchdown, kick the field goal, beat down one possession, get ball at halftime, possibly score right here. But now I'm still down two possessions, right? Here we go again on the out route again. My timing is off, and I throw another pick six. I am down 24 to 7, and I'm thinking to myself, I am getting blown out by just regular two men under. I know what he's doing. He hasn't thought about changing his defense, and why the hell should he? You know, he's locking me up right now, and now, that, okay, let's focus. Let's throw these out routes how we know how to throw them. Stop throwing them too early. And let's get these timing right. It's going to be almost impossible to come back 24-7. to um, All you really have to do is just sit on the ball. I'm down way too many possessions. It's only four-minute quarters. Right, I roll out with Drew Brees. And deep over the middle. We end up finding somebody wide open. And we end up finding A.J. Green. We get tackled at about the 15-yard line. Again, we try to go to the back of the end zone. And another interception in the end zone. It's not looking good for your boy, folks, man. I'm down 24-7, and he has ball. And all he really has to do is just sit on the clock right here, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's running the ball, and doesn't look like we're going to be able to finish off this perfect season. But right after this one right here, let's cue the epic football music now. So here we go down 24-7 right now. In order for us to come back, we have to play impeccable defense. We gotta stop the run. We gotta stop the pass. We gotta stop every single thing possible. We hit him as he's throwing. We forced the third and so This right here will be key. We can finally get ourselves to stop. Kim Newton backs up. He goes deep over the middle. And we deny that quicker than the portal. We can try to get it low from a bank. Fourth and 12 for the first time this game. We actually get ourselves a defensive stand. And we have the ball back again on offense where we have been struggling each and every single possession. So here Drew Brees goes back. Throws right over the middle. Dangerous throw. But we do come away with the completion. Seconds and four. Drew Brees backs up. Another throw to Larry Fitzgerald right now. As you guys can imagine, fourth quarter's here. We're down so many possessions. Drop pass right there by Larger, which was huge. We got to be able to no huddle and keep the ball going. We got to be able to avoid that accelerated clock. And we hit him with the skinny. And here we go, backing up, man. And we finally get ourselves a good out route where we're not throwing the ball too early, forcing the interception to give him back the ball. So Drew Brees is trying to put the team on his back. Right now, we are throwing these out routes how we normally do. And we back up and we hit him with another out route. Now we are finally destroying this man-to-man -man defense. We go to the back of the end zone and Randy Momo drops the one-handed catch. Usually when you get that animation, they come down with it. Unfortunately for us, he did it. Right there, we go back up and Fitzgerald drops a pass. I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do to get an incentive on more man-to-man? -man? And we end up going to my main man, Dickinson, who comes up with the catch on the out route. First they go, we back up five wide on the goal line because that's how we do it. Almost to an interception right there. Second and go. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? We end up going to Dickerson on the toss. So we score a touchdown 14 to 24. And I kick it off. Why? Because I'm not expecting him to come back. I know I'm down multiple possessions. I know I'm going to need him to really make a mistake in order for me to come back. So instead of running the ball, he decides to come out in the pass. And that stops the clock. Incomplete pass. Second and 10. Came no, he backs up. Whoop! I'm sorry, son, but no, so you give it to me, baby. And look at Diaz in as he can go. Oh, 
the way, ladies and gentlemen, girls and pets of all ages. So we actually have an opportunity to come back in this ball game. We have all of our timeouts. We are down three points. If we go hold them to a field goal, get ourselves another defensive stand, get the ball back, score, we may win this game. So, two minute warning is right here. Second level, he stands in the pocket. He steps up and he stumbles forward for a couple of yards. Third and seven. This right here is big. I'm not calling any timeouts in case he picks up a first down. He decides to roll out with Camden. Fourth and five is dangerous, but he decides to go for it. He's trying to get himself a win right here instead of playing defensively. And we forced an incompletion, giving us the ball with less than a minute left already in field goal range. We decide to take out Drew Brees to build in Kaepernick, trying to give us a little bit more speed, trying to hit him with a couple of read options. And right near, right here, look at the heart. Look at the heart that Kaepernick has. He wants to win this game. Right now, we decided to run the ball with Dickinson. We're not calling any timeouts because if we do score, we want to give him as little time as possible. And we hit him with the screenplay. And Dickinson goes into the end zone. And we have the lead for the first time in this game where we were down 24 to 7, almost approaching the fourth quarter. And he had ball. And somehow, some way, we make a miracle and come back in this game. Not only do we come back, we seal the deal and get the victory. A lot of heart was shown on that field that day. The little digital hearts that my guys had that day were as big as I've ever seen. That's the end of the game, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, your boy GS love each and every single one of you guys. I'm out. Peace. Give me, give me, baby.